welcome to colorful pages today we will be doing a very important useful and creative tutorial so what we are doing we are basically doing an upcycling tutorial what is upcycling and why we want to do it see when we surf internet or we go to market we are tempted to see so many new new things and we want to buy it so we buy all that when we purchase all that thing there are few things lying at our home also so what do we think do with the things which we already have at our home we throw it in the dustbin now this is the cause of lot of pollution which is created on earth because these things which we throw in the dustbin they do not become soil very early it take ages and ages millions and billions of years for them to decompose and become a soil this way we are hurting our earth so this is a very wrong thing so that is the reason why i have selected a very entertaining video for all of you a good creative tutorial in which i will be teaching you how to upcycle your things now i will show you what i have upcycled now these are few pins which i already had at my home you can see these are my regular normal hair pins and you can see the paint is coming out yes so this is one you can see some more different uh, size and shapes which i have been using you can see the paint which is coming out and i don't feel like using them anymore so what i did i upcycled these pins and made something like this now these are the hair pins which i have created using this type of old hair pin which has uh, the paint of which has already gone and i was about to throw it in the dustbin so see now how beautiful this pin looks from front and from the back so this pin also i have made out of rags now this white cotton cloth which you are seeing which i have used as a base is basically a leftover piece of cloth which i already had at my home and the embroidery threads also were leftover pieces of threads at my place and the only thing which i have bought actually is this white felt here which i have used for covering the back and making the pin very neat otherwise 90% this pin is a upcycled recycled product and you are also seeing this one the tutorial of this will be launched very soon but for now you watch the tutorial of these two hair pins so without wasting any time let's get started first i want to show you all the material which we will be needing now for making this hair pin the first thing of course we need a hair pin like this this one is a simple ordinary hair pin a tic tac pin which is very common and easily available and i guess most of us are using it in our everyday life so first thing is this one a tic tac pin i have taken a bigger size of this pin uh, you can select the size of the pin according to your own self whatever will suit your hair the best so i need bigger one other than this uh, i will be needing a cloth so this cloth i want to show you this is a actually a rough cloth you can see the it's it's basically a cut out it's not a full piece i have not bought a uh, new fresh piece from the market but it is a uh, it is a side uh, cutting waste type cloth which i already have at home so i'm using it uh, to make this hair pin so this is that white cloth you can use uh, the cloth which suits you best the color you can select your own self i had white so i am making on white uh, also we need this like this few needles uh, these needles which we are going to use will be the thinner ones so i will be using a very fine needle like this this is this is a fine needle with a good eye a long eye and this is fine i will not be using a thick needle this is a very thin and a very fine needle of course i will be using some embroidery threads for this project i will be using this pink color thread you can see the number is 
for making the roses and i will use this uh, uh, green color thread which is uh, 0255 the link of all this material i will be adding in the description box uh, i will also use some nice brown in the center of the rose to make some pollen for that okay and uh, this is my embroidery scissor if you don't have this scissor you can also use a ordinary scissor which is available at home of course i will be using pencil and uh, some frame this is a kind of wooden frame which i use for embroidery so let us start quickly the process the first thing which we have to do is very very simple we will just keep our hair pin like this on the cloth see that you are leaving enough space on all the sides all right and you need to draw the the hair pin kind of tracing so just hold the hair pin with your one finger and quickly with the help of a pencil just you need to draw it like this you can just bend because then there is a curve here you can bend the hair pin then again the other side you need to do and this is done so i am making two hair pins that is why i am going to trace this design twice so the other one i will trace here i will keep some distance you can see around 3 finger space i am keeping between both the hair pins right so like this the second one i am drawing here now this project is really very easy and very interesting also you can design your own hair pin matching with your whatever dress you have like this see now what we will do we will leave a bit of margin and we are going to draw a kind of outline so like this roughly no need to be very precised about this so kind of rough outline like this you can draw the same thing i will do here this will not show so you don't have to worry about the accuracy part here like this okay so both we have sketched now what now very simple we need to draw a circle here so i am drawing a big circle here whatever i am doing one side the same i am going to do on the other side and i will show you that in a time lapse i will make few roses with some leaves so all these extra marks will hide you don't have to be so much worried about you know all these marks all of these marks are going to hide under the embroidery so same thing i am going to do here now this very circle i am dividing into five parts 1 2 3 4 and 5 simply just divide the circle into five parts same here divide it into five parts followed by same process here five parts now we will take a frame and we will put this in the embroidery frame so right here in front of you what you are seeing is the anchor thread which i am using for the embroidery and i will just open this one string and show it to you that this one 
string of anchor thread actually compiles of six strings you can see six small strings here uh, like this what i am doing i am using only two stands from here these are called stands so two stands i am taking i will just open and i will cut with the help of a scissor and i will use only we are going to softly pull out the two stands from here and i am going to use only the two stands in my needle now these two stands as you can see uh, there are two sides of this thread so one i have kept long and the other i have kept short the long one i have made a tiny knot here first thing which we need to do right now is to take out the two stands from the cloth and like this very simply you need to it's just kind kind of overwriting with the help of your needle and thread you are doing on the marked lines where you have marked the lines like this so very simple process it is and extremely beautiful so this one i am doing right now for the rose see and just put it inside extremely easy embroidery this is now go to the back side of the cloth like this and use like this little cloth and just make a tiny knot here like this simply just make one or two knots nice ones so that your thread is intact in its position so make nice knots please do not keep the thread over loose and also at the same time you should be careful that your uh, thread is not over tight so both the things you need to take care of and i will cut it the same process i will do in this rose also and the two other rows which are there on the next clip after finishing all these flowers the four flowers i am using another anchor thread the number is 1201 uh, this i will now use all the six stands six stands means the complete thread i am going to use for my embroidery making these flowers so like this i will take out and in my needle i have to put the thread and full you can see all these strings six strings i have used and what is important here is that we need to now this time catch hold of both the ends of the thread like this and both these ends the ends of the thread we need to tie it together so this is something different which we are doing now okay so both the ends you can see both the threads are tied up together now and we will start doing the making the flowers doing embroidery on the flowers now so how we are going to do again the same process the first step is putting the frame like this very easy and then what we will do is we will take out our needle from close to the end anywhere here okay anywhere near any stand all right so like this you are going to take out one and from where you have taken out you are going to miss this leave this and what you are going to do from under this second one you are going to pass the needle 
through so this is the very easy process see now when you have used this you are going to leave this one and you will pass your needle through which one this one so that is why we have made it five you can make these lines five seven nine all odd numbers all right now after passing the needle through this we are going to leave this and then we will pass our needle through this like this so this is the process which we are going to do around this all these lines till we reach the end one we are going to pass through and one we are going to leave one skip one pass through one skip one pass through it is just kind of weaving weaving in a circle After finishing these flowers, uh, I am using now this green color thread for making these tiny little leaves. For making these leaves, one thing more I want to do is just to make a center line in between the leaves which I have sketched like this center line. Just dividing the leaves into two parts. Simply. Not a very big thing. It's just a very simple and easy thing which I am doing. So I will use now again the embroidery hoop and fix it here, right here on the cloth and this time I have taken three stands of anchor thread and only at one end I have made a knot. Not, I am not using both the ends, I am using only one end of this anchor thread to make a knot here and I will take out my thread here from the top of the leaf like this. So simply just take out your thread from the top of the leaf and the straight line which you have drawn this. So just go on that straight line and take out the thread on the outline. So you are working on the center line and you are working on the outline. Two things you are working on together. So any side you can take the thread out left or right first I prefer to take out the thread from the left hand side so after this again come back to the center line and take out your thread from the right hand side so same thing you have to do one time left and one time right so now what I am doing I am going to the left hand side where I will put the needle I will put the needle in the center where I will take out the thread now from the right hand side so one time left hand side and the other time right hand side so this is how it goes and the same process will be done in all the leaves
will now start making the pollen area of these flowers and I will be taking a brown color thread, anchor thread like this and I will use all the six strings and on only one end I will make a knot and this for this we need to put again the frame after using the frame simply we are using the process of node stitch to make the pollen so here it goes you can start from the center just right in the center take out your needle like this hold the thread from your left hand side keep the face of the needle down towards the flower and wrap this thread two three four times and put it back again on the same place but remember do not leave this thread from your left hand which you are holding from your left hand and you are going to smartly pull down the thread like this now you will start doing the sides after doing the center you will start doing the same process in the side one two three four and again you will put inside the needle holding the thread with your left hand side continue holding the thread do not leave the thread and pull it back so like this you need to fill this entire area and all the flowers After finishing doing the embroidery work on all these uh, flowers, all these patterns here, now I will quickly start telling you how we will work on the clip. So as you can see, I am recycling this stuff. You can see my hairpin. This is not a very good one. It's a really old one. You can see the paints chipping out from uh, some of the area. So I wanted to recycle, not recycle, sorry, upcycle this also and what i do now is that i will take one like this this is a foam sheet which i had at home again you can see from the condition it's not a new one it is something which i had lying somewhere in a corner of my place and i will take a scissor and i will place the pin like this and quickly cut the foam in the size of the pin so like this we hold it and like this we will cut it this one is a really beautiful upcycling DIY now I will use this fabric glue with the help of fabric glue, I will paste this sponge on this area of the pin. But before doing so, I am going to open the pin like this. So like this, I have opened the pin and the fabric glue, I am going to apply nicely on the top part of the pin 
not on the base remember and that is the reason why I have opened the pin so that the base of the pin doesn't get stick with this fabric glue and the sponge which we have cut we will paste like this on the top and we will let it to rest for some time so that this sticks on it nicely so like this only we will keep it aside we will come back to the cloth now till the time this pin is getting dry and we need to cut this cloth from this marked area which we have marked so quickly we will take the scissor and we will cut this Now just take the pin and see that the pin is closed like this and keep your embroidered area here like this. Just set with your hand the location and then when you are satisfied turn it around and use a normal thread. You can see now I am not using an anchor thread. I am using a normal cotton reel thread right now and I will start binding it. So how do I bind? For binding the simplest way is just keep this aside and like this running stitch. Do this running stitch all around this fabric. I am using a grey color thread because I want you all to see clearly what I am doing. So that is why I am using a grey color thread here. Uh, you can use the col same color thread of which you are using the fabric. Same, the fabric and the thread color should be same otherwise. I am just using the grey color so that you are able to see what I am doing exactly. So this is a simple kacha or running stitch what we call and I am doing it really very roughly like this. This project will not take much time but it's a really interesting one see like this too roughly all around the pattern which you have made very interesting simple stylish this DIY is it's upcycling of this waste cloth, the sponge and the hairpin is really interesting and nobody will come to know that this is created out of waste stuff see like this and I will just extend a bit more so once I finish this I will keep my thread on the left hand side as you can see I will put my pin here right in the center I will set the design and very nicely I am going to pull it when I am pulling I will open the pin you can see now and I am pulling so nicely pull use a double thread and you can see in the front here stretch pull nicely and fix the entire stuff the entire cloth see how beautiful the pin looks now easy and simple but it's not yet complete again I'm opening it and I'm going to pull it a little more for more neatness slowly slowly pull see that you have a good thread a good strong thread because you need to pull a lot it should not be that you are pulling and the thread it breaks in between and pull slowly don't be in hurry slowly slowly keep on pulling
see how much the thread can be pulled and then you need to fix it so fix it nicely like this a few knots here and there to ensure that the fixing is done nicely and then you may cut the thread but this pin is still not complete because we need to add some more finishing to the pin see after finishing this uh, embroidery and the stitching of this cloth the embroidered cloth on the clip the next step is to do finishing on this background this background area because this looks quite untidy so what we are going to use for doing finishing over here is this now what is this this is called a felt this is a felt which i have used and this felt is easily available in the stationery shop you will not have to struggle a lot for finding this felt and take the felt and quickly you can trace the size of the pin here on the felt and what you need to do is that when you are going to cut the felt cut it little smaller because we are using it as the background we don't want this to be very big so that it comes out from the side and take the scissor quickly cut the entire shape like this so this much hard work to upcycle your old stuff and make it look very pretty is quite justified a huh? little more finishing i will do here a bit this side it's looking crooked just to make it little more neat and tidy and the tip holes like this and just remove the extra things let the table be cleaned and what you do is just keep it here and see the size yes now you can see it is smaller than the size of the the entire pin so here keep it like this hold your thumb and you can feel this pin now what pin i am talking about i am talking about this side okay so you can feel this joint here very much here so what you do you will make a small mark here and then take it just fold it from the center a bit like this and with the help of scissor make a tiny cut here so you can observe this tiny cut which i have made you can see here like this the cut which i have made and open the pin put your this black part of the pin over here pull it down and keep keep it just set it with your hand everything nicely on its place after setting everything nicely i just need to make this cut a little bigger so what i'm doing is i'm folding it again and i'm making a another cut so here the second cut which i have made ha huh, this seems to be perfect see yes and just set the felt with your hand and close the pin like this now take needle and thread which thread i am using now i am using a very plain ordinary this this is called a reel okay cotton thread so this is what i am using now and with the help of blanket stitch i am going to stitch this felt on the cloth so i will first open it like this take the needle out from here okay and the stitch i am using is called the blanket stitch now you close this 
and always hold your this thread with your left hand now come back on the felt and take out so when you are taking out the needle make sure that your thread is always under the needle and in this way if you are going to do you are going to make a very nice blanket stitch now blanket stitch is very easy stitch and you can with the help of blanket stitch easily close the edge of this felt and the cloth you can easily collect them sew them together so this is the blanket stitch blanket stitch is also used for embroidery but here i am using blanket stitch for stitching both the parts the felt as well as the cloth so you can see the corner and every time i am taking the felt and i am taking the cloth every time you see that my thread is always under the needle like this so i am taking the curve here you will realize that after stitching the felt and the cloth with blanket stitch there is lot of finishing which will make the hair pin look extremely pretty very beautiful see like this keep on setting the felt and the cloth with your hand so if you are messed up like this please don't be scared just check the thread keep the needle inside and like this stretch it stretch it once you stretch it your tangle will be open it will be detangled right sometimes it happens mostly it happens when we use a long thread for embroidery like i am using a long thread so i will recommend to use a you can take more threads if you want again but i will recommend to use shorter thread when you are doing this blanket stitch and we are going to complete like this till right from here till the point where we started now you can see how pretty these pins look like they are upcycled a very ordinary old pin a rough piece of cloth which i got found actually at my home and already i had some of the embroidery threads i used only these and i guess the only thing which i bought from the market was this felt paper uh, which i had used for the background this white felt paper only this i got from the market the rest all the things which i used for making this pin was already at my home and see how nice finishing is there now okay and also see you can open and see the pin looks perfect close and see open and see see from back from front how nice it looks so this is totally upcycled I'm sure you all liked my this upcycling tutorial and you are going to try making one for yourself don't forget to make and give to your family and friends also spread happiness spread smile everywhere you go don't forget to like share and subscribe my channel stay tuned 
for more creative videos. So stay healthy, stay happy and keep learning always.